I'm gonna be a mighty king, so enemies beware. That's right, players. What up? It's War Boss Tay up in this mode, and today we're gonna paint up this saber tusk up to this point, base coats and shades. So the paints you're gonna need are XV88, Morn Fang Brown, Dryad Bark, Adapadaran Black, Rackarth Flesh, Agrax Earth Shade, and Seraphim Sepia. <laughs> So uh, stay tuned to see how I paint our little Saber Tusk Tiger up to this point. And uh, thanks for all of the new subscribers who have joined and uh, joined onto my channel and started subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know you're here. And uh, thanks for all the support you guys. Hope you guys are all having a happy Easter weekend and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Laters! All right, players, let's get started painting this saber tusk. So the first thing I did was I primed my model in black. I used the Chaos Black Primer Spray. Uh, usually I do, I, I use a duplicate color matte gray primer, but I decided since this guy's mane was gonna be black, I would just, you know, try something new and paint him up or spray him up with a black primer instead. One less step to have to worry about. Uh, but usually I do use a duplicate color matte gray primer. So the first color we're gonna be using on our saber tusk is, and again, the goal is we wanna try to make our saber tusk look like Scar from The Lion King. So not crazy bright and colorful, but just a really good mix of, of um, browns and beige colors. So to get that, we're gonna start with XV88. <clears throat> and yeah, this color is just gonna go everywhere on the model. So you wanna use your wet palette. If you don't know what that is, there's so many videos online. Oh, I got too much paint on my brush, but that's okay, I'm using a pretty pretty junk, junked up brush because I'm just, I'm just trying to get the paint on. Uh, feel free to use a better quality brush though. The thing I, I notice about saber tusks and m most things that are organic and not say totally encased in armor, yeah this brush is terrible though, is the, sometimes the quality of your brush will really affect the paint job. If your brush has, if you haven't been taking care of your brush, which looks like all of the brushes that I'm pulling are, are not very well cared for. These seem to be the brushes that I brought from my, from uh, my other place. I didn't really take care of my brushes back then. Uh, the bristles are gonna be a lot harder and stiffer and they're more likely to cr create these uh, streaks where you can see the brush strokes and that f is easier to hide on organic models or models where you're painting skin rather than armor. Like you could really notice the quality of a brush say if you're painting a space marine and the space marine the space marine has a certain color armor like many of the chapters and chaos legions do have Sorry, I'm trying to see if I have a better pot of XV88. This one seems to be running, running a little bit low. Uh, the quality of your brush is going to really change how the appearance of your paint job kind of looks on the model itself. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's all right. We'll make do. So I used to. I used to worry a lot about how my brush was doing and then when I started learning how to clean my brush properly, when I would take the time to do it, I would really, it would really help me out. So there's a lot of great YouTube videos out there on 
proper care and maintenance of your brushes. Many of which I wish I had found before trashing all of my brushes. But I guess, hey, that's that's what happens, right? You you learn a skill like painting miniatures and after a little while you have to kind of pick up the tricks and learn new skills and that's what it's all about. Community, sharing the skills and the techniques with everybody else out there. So I'm taking care to I roll it on my brush here. I'm taking care to try and cover as much as I can so I don't have to worry about coming back later. And even though at this point your belly and your the chest of the model are gonna be colored differently in a lighter beige color, we want to just be thorough and the, the best way to do that is to just get the color on everything. It's easier to fix a mistake and paint over something than to have to go and come go back to it later when you're already in the later stages. So I'm just I'm not being too careful with you know not painting the fur that's gonna end up black. Not painting the chest, which is gonna end up cream. I'm just trying to get all the brown skin tones as much as I can. If you're an Ogre Kingdoms player, that's what this model is for, you'll probably have three of these guys. That's the that's the, the tactic. You get them out and they're kind of like you know delaying tactics for when you're deploying and they they do pretty great on, on the flanks and just kind of troubling and harassing your opponent. They're not too expensive. Most lists can pack these they're called like the three three saber tooths pack. They can pack them in into the points. It doesn't really hurt them too much. And hey, they're, they're cool to look at. They're fun. They're fun to paint. They're easy to paint. So, yeah, consider getting yourself some of these if you have not already. All right, so the XV88 has gone on nicely. We're going to move on to the ivory colors on our model. And that's going to be simply base coated with Rackarth Flesh. Now, Rackwife Flesh is a great color because it's used for portraying like ivory, like I said, or bone. So this guy's tusks, his, his, his talons, and all of the cream colored parts. So we take a look at our other two test models here. Are going to be base coated, if not finished, in Rackwife Flesh. So taking a look at my test model, I'm going to paint the, the cheeks and the bottom part of his, his chinny chin chin, the underside of his belly, and the socks on his feet. Easy peasy. And uh, really, yeah, simple to do, and it's gonna be, it's gonna look really effective. So I'm gonna start here, down under his chin. And I also notice if you're doing things like organic models, models that are alive, then Brush strokes, the smaller your brush strokes are, I and mean, this could just be superstition or you know my mad ramblings, but the sh the shorter and more frequent, more numerous brush strokes you do, the better final effect it'll have. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Who knows? Who knows? I think that's an old wise tale, master. <gasps> Igor! Yes, master. Where have you been hiding all this time? Have you been not behind the autofocus of this camera? Have you not been focusing my videos? Is that why it looks all blurry and fuzzy and everything looks out of frame all the time? No, master. I've been hitting the clubs with Lewis. He's been depressed lately. His girlfriend broke up with him. Ah, that's terrible. For those of you who just subscribed to my channel, you might not know my live-in manservant, Igor, and the crazy old necromancer that likes to come around, Lewis. Let me see if I can find them. Lewis! Hey, Warbush Tave! 
Finally some camera time. Hello ladies. I'm on I'm on eHarmony and look me up. I'm very lonely. Hello, my name's Igor. I'm just sitting on the side of the table operating the camera. Man, I haven't seen those guys in forever. Like literally, they've been packed away. They've been packed away. Okay, so you don't have to. Some of my some of my saber tusks or two of the other saber tusk models that I have do not have their socks painted so high up. But let me just show you so that you can see the the difference for yourself and you can decide what you want to do. So these saber tusks, only their toes are painted rack art flesh. Same as this one, it only goes to the back of the heel. I've decided to go a little bit higher with these socks because Maki kind of his his socks are a little bit higher. So as a little tribute to my little Maki man, I'm gonna paint their socks a little bit higher. And you don't want the colors to mix. So if your rack art flesh is starting to mix with your still wet XV88, then you want to just go back and get only rack art flesh. The, usually you want a nice blend for your colors, but not when you're doing something like this where the colors are too distinct. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just saw Winter Soldier last week. I didn't see all the first Marvel Phase 1 movies, so I missed out on... Um, I saw Iron Man, definitely. I saw... I think that was it. I, I missed Thor, I missed Captain America. And I missed... Because I missed those, I refused to see the Avengers. So when Aven the Avengers came out in theaters, I was like, nope. Nope. Decided just not to watch it. <clears throat> oh, I'm also painting his tusks. So... Yeah, I was, was kind of... Kind of just against the whole thing. And then, you know... They it came out on Netflix. All these movies came out on Netflix, and I thought, oh, for sure, I'm gonna watch these movies now. But then they took it away when the Phase Two movies started coming out, like the new Thor movie, The Dark World, and yeah, now to get ready for Captain America Two, I was so pumped because I I saw all the movies. I saw the first Captain America and the first Thor, and I thought, oh man, I'm gonna watch all these movies. I'm gonna have like a movie marathon. Avengers is on Netflix. They've still got Avengers, but I don't know if I want to watch that without watching the other, the other movies first. And yeah, so I did go to see Winter Soldier, though. I had a great time. The Lady Boss and I have been seeing lots of movies lately. What did we see last week? We saw. I thought we saw something after Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, we saw Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, you guys. If you guys like movies, go see Grand Budapest Hotel. Don't blame me if you don't like it, though. I don't think it's for everyone. All right, Abaddon Black. Seriously, though, Grand Budapest Hotel. As a, as a movie person, person who loves movies, doesn't usually talk about them on my miniature painting channel. Uh, I can say, though, that Grand Budapest Hotel Great movie. So what we're doing now is we're being careful. I, I got a different brush, one of my newer brushes. And I'm just being careful about where I paint the black. What I want to do is hit all of the fur, the black fur. that's been um, painted with XV88 when I was doing my base coat. Thing with that, on black, you gotta shake it up. If you don't shake it up, it gets really watery on top. And so when you try to apply it, it spreads without really painting or coloring or covering rather the color that's it's meant to be painted over. Okay, I'm also going to take my paintbrush and going to line my Saber Tusk's bottom lip. So the transition is Ivory Tusk's black bottom lip and then cream colored chin.
and just painting in his mouth with black. The great thing is if you paint over any of the ivory tusks, like I just accidentally got some black paint onto this left tusk over here, you can just paint back over it, no problem. Later when this video is uploading for part one, what I'm also going to be doing is painting black on the base. I'm going to clean up the base just a little bit so it doesn't have all these brown colors. And you might as well do it now because we're not going to get too crazy back into the base. The bottom parts of the model, rather. So I'll finish that later. You also want to kind of see where the chest fuzz is, as well as the fur on the legs, on the feet so that you can paint those black. And the tail, of course, anything that is like long fur, like mane. Because we're really going for the, the, the Disney's Lion King scar look mixed with, of course, Warhammer saber tusk. One of my favorite movies when I was a little boy, Lion King. Gonna be a mighty king. The so enemies beware. Oh. Alright, so looks like right. There we go. So I know most people, most of you guys out there, just put my videos on to play while you're painting. And probably a lot of you might be watching this and you don't even have a saber tusk or maybe even an iron, iron an ogre kingdom's army. Oh, my alarm. And uh, that's okay though. I, I always enjoy knowing that even if you're not using my videos for to paint up the models that I'm, I'm demonstrating that, you know, you guys enjoy watching the videos anyways. That really makes me, makes me happy. So thank you guys. I'm at 9,300 subscribers. Who would have thought? That's crazy. <clears throat> and yeah, thank you for, for all the support. All right, so while I was waiting for the battery to recharge, I took my Abaddon Black, I painted it on the base. I painted inside the mouth of the saber tusk and uh, got, got it on all the places that got the black onto all the other places that needed cleaning. I'm going to take my Rackarth flesh once again and just add a second layer or clean up like here in the tusks which I got a little bit too much black on. Have it on black. And anywhere where the black just got a little bit too much on. I'm also going to use, like over here, you see I smudged a little bit of the black on the back foot. So, a little bit of Rackarth flesh on it should do it. I forgot to mention that these little tusks sticking out of our saber tooth uh, shoulder there, we painted with Rackarth flesh as well. Now we're going to paint the belly. So I'm just going to take my Rackarth flesh, paint it right here on the underbelly and kind of follow, get to the bottom of the ribs. Just like that. Are you? And then when you extend it underneath, you can also pull it up to the other side here. Pause, please. The lady boss just came home. We're gonna watch Wolf of Wall Street I'm tonight. Tell you secrets. Uh oh, she's gonna tell me secrets, you guys. Shh, pause it. She's gonna tell me secrets. I have to go. But first, I'm gonna paint this belly right here. All right, rack hard flesh. Paint it on the belly. It's gonna look awesome. I have to hear secrets now. And I'm back. So, Abaddon Black on the eyes now. The secret wasn't really that great. You know what the secret was? 
the secret was she wants me to buy her more shoes. <laughs> uh, just joking. All right, right on the eyes. There you go. See, if you can paint it at an angle, like from the front, then if you're painting it from the angle instead of from the side, you'll notice that when you're holding the model up to look at it, uh -huh. you can see you can see the eyes from the front. Yeah, yeah, you do see, you see that? that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see I it? I do, I do. Fascinating. Thank you. Meow. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. Last thing we're gonna do in this stage one base coat is we're gonna paint the stripes on his back. And the stripes on his back are gonna be painted on with Mornfang Brown. Right? Yeah, I have to double check. Mornfang Brown. So we're going for like a crescent shape with the points at the front and then the curve towards the back, curving towards the back. So that's our example. Is there a way to um, texturize them? Uh, what? What do you mean texturize them? Just so like, they in, appear... Like fur? You know, yeah. And rough? And not as smooth and light. Uh, yes, there are texture paints that we can use for that. So we'll, we'll try that. I've got some, I've got some texture paints we'll, we'll use. Um, don't worry if it appears a little too light. We're gonna paint mm -hmm. a little stripe in the center. Oh, okay. Eventually, but first we're just trying to get the general shape. Right, right. You don't let me work. <laughs> and you're trying to make my YouTube videos. I'm being supportive. Oh, okay. Thank you. It tickles. All right. Stripe over here by the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And one over here by the neck. Mm -hmm. There. And can really be as, as short or as long as you want them to be. Uh, it's gonna affect a little bit of the look of the model, but not too much. And then you can always clean them up later with some more XV88. So I always like to do four or five stripes, which I feel is a good, it's a pretty good number. The fifth one, I usually like to make it just a, just a little, a little one compared to the others. Like that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint some stripes up the legs. So same concept, same principle. You wanna just do like three or four stripes on each leg. And uh, this time the curve is going downwards. And there's no real science or technique to this. I'm kind of just going with whatever feels and looks good to me. The tricky thing is you want to get underneath, hold it at an angle so that you could look under it. That way you can see. See it from all the different angles, right? You don't want the stripes to be too thin but be careful that when you thicken them up, they don't look too, too um, bulked out. Otherwise, they're, they're just gonna end up looking kind of sloppy. Mm, you don't want that. If you have a lot of paint on your brush, you could start at the middle and then drag the color out to the sides. And also something else you might wanna think about is painting the stripes onto the the uh, break in the model where the shoulder meets the front leg. 
and it's going to do a little bit to hide. Not it, it won't hide it completely, but it will kind of kind of camouflage it a little bit. It's a little painting trick to kind of distract the eye, depending on how you paint it. Okay, so here's one more piece of advice I want to give. I started painting the right leg stripe underneath from under the belly. So when I pull two paint on the right side, I just want to make sure that the stripe is consistent. So I'm kind of meeting it halfway and then pulling it out. I mean, this is something that really nobody's going to notice, but you'll notice and you want to make sure that you do a good job. There. Easy peasy. Simple dimple. Uh, the thing that's going to make our stripes pop is going to be the dryad bark. And the dryad bark is going to be painted in a tiny little stripe that goes right down the center of each of the Mornfang brown stripes. You want to make sure that you wet these, wet your paint in your wet palette, get it nice and soggy, so that when you pull it across the stripes, let me see if I can show you correctly, it will just kind of fan out instead of be a thick you don't want a thick stripe of paint off your brush you want to just kind of be able to fan it out and feather it out is actually the term I'm looking for feather the stripe out from the center paint it as much as you can in the center of the more fang brown stripe rather than on the ends well, this is a little different from other highlights where the darker area would be on the outside and the inner part of the thing you're painting is where the highlights are but for stripes it's going to be easier for the eye to see when the lighter color is surrounding the darker color because it's painting off of a light skin tone. The XV88 skin tone of the Sabre Tusk you've got is going to be a completely different shade from these stripes, right? So the uh, the dried bark paint is going to really help to sell that. Now, take a look at my stripes here on the back. I kind of messed up a little bit on purpose just to show you how to fix it. Yeah, right! You messed up because you're a bad painter and you're never gonna win Golden Demon! It's a horrible thing to say, Lewis. So I'm gonna take my XV88 now and I'm just gonna show you how we can clean up the sides of a messy stripe. So you see the second stripe down the back looks really sloppy. Just gonna take our XV88 and push the curve and kinda tweak the curve a little bit. When you do this, you wanna you're going to want to feather the paint out the sides like this so it doesn't look all clumpy. But that is a good way of kind of fixing your mistakes as well as tightening up the sides. A lot of people think that once you paint a mistake, you just kind of leave it because it's too much trouble to, to fix. But just going back over with the, the paint you did previously, it's not such a bad thing. Like nobody is going to paint these colors on perfectly the first time and actually the more you the more coats thin coats you add the more likely you are to get some good transition colors and some good highlights and shading and it's actually going to make your model look better than if you just slap one coat on at a time and there you have it the last thing we're going to do in this video before we send it off to print is we're going to put on some washes. In fact, only two washes. We're going to use Agrax Earth Shade and if I can find it, I might not have it right in front of me, but you want to prepare Seraphim Sepia or if you have the old color range, it's going to be Griffin Sepia. I'm going to have to dig into my washes to see if I can find that one. Um, but take a look for those and when we get back we will paint those on our model let it dry and then part one of our how to paint a saber tusk will be done it looks like they're naked and skinned with like tattoos on them 
Ladybot says that they look naked with tattoos on their skin because there's no fur on it. Uh, which is true, but if you know, if you do some some highlights and some, like I said, some textured paints, it it might. And from you know, from a table away, it's not gonna look so bad. All right, what are we doing? Seraphim Sepul. This is gonna go on your XV88. Anything that is XV88, which is all of the all of the hide fur. Are you quite finished? That's the name of the paint, all right? Oh my god. Anyways. <laughs> well, the lady boss continues to make fun of <laughs> the way I say Serafim <laughs> Sofio. I'm going to continue painting it on and we're being very light with it because it's, it's really easy to change the color tone of the whole model if you put too much or if you let it pool in any of these larger flat surface areas. So we're just really lightly brushing it on. Down on his nose too, if you please. And we want to take a look and make sure that we got it everywhere we want it to be and that the shade has not accumulated in any of the creases. Some places where that would be would be where the, the hips are. Anywhere where the mane, the furry mane, hits the rest of the skin. Uh, and yeah, any, anywhere like that. You want to just double check that you haven't gotten any tricky pools that are going to be hard to paint over later. You also want to check from the back butt shot and from the front see I see that I missed a spot right over here over his front shoulder <clears throat> then Agrix Earthshade you're not really using too much for just for the teeth the mouth and the teeth as you'll notice we haven't really touched the Rackarth flesh gloves or mittens or socks we're gonna leave those the way it is because it's gonna be easier to, to paint over it and the shades should only really be used in the creases. So if you can, what you could take Agrax Earthshade 2 is the folds in between the toes. That would be okay, so we'll do that right now. You want to try to avoid getting it on the entire sock, though. But as you can see, the minute you put Agrax Earthshade onto the sock, it will kind of fill in those gaps. And you might not even know, have noticed those those gaps before, so having having a shade is is good for that purpose. All right, and we are done for step one. We're gonna let this dry. Lady Boss and I are gonna watch Wolf of Wall Street, and we'll see if we can wrap this up with some re-highlighting, final details, a little bit of blood effects, and uh, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Later.